and the numbers read 912 Eight one one. So I immediately just start decoding it the same way that I decoded the numbers on the outside of the box. But it isn't making sense in any way that I'm doing it. It's coming out to IAB and HAA, which made no sense to me until I looked back at the tissue paper on the inside of the box. It was happy birthday tissue paper. And my birthday is September 12th. And my girl's birthday is August 11th. And this is where I start to genuinely get scared. But we're just trying our absolute best to keep it together. I didn't like the threats on the outside at all, but these boxes are meant to freak you out. But it got different when I saw our birthdays on. A lot of companies reach out to me, but I'm not often absolutely blown away by the products that they're offering. This company, Storyiverse, reached out to me to sponsor this video, and they are sponsoring this video. But I want to make this very clear. This is the best product for storytelling that I've ever seen. I want so desperately to push their product because it is so high level and so interesting and cool and new and groundbreaking. When I got to look at Storyiverse's new app, I was blown away. And if you guys enjoy Enjoy my stories, I deeply encourage you to download that app and check out this new storytelling style that they've created. This app feels like it's a celebration of storytelling as an art form, and it excites me. Each story showcases different voices and unique storytelling styles. They completely avoid cookie cutter content, and this app isn't geared at children. This is for adults. Each story has complex themes and edgy narratives, and it's all completely original content. These are real artists putting together amazing stories onto this platform. I just want to be a part of it, and I want you guys to be a part of it. Storyiverse feels like it's going to be the next evolution of comics and novels. The platform elevates the concept of visual reading to a completely different level. There's 2D, 3D, hand-drawn, anime, and more. They have a story for every single genre, from science fiction to fantasy to thriller to horror to comedy. They almost feel like that show Love Death Robots. It's just so cool. When I downloaded this app, all I could start thinking about is how I wanted to start making stories specifically for this app. And I really want to crack at making a story on that platform. So please download that app. It's called Storyiverse on Apple and Android devices. This is a free app. You don't have to pay for it. So you guys need to show them love. Go and follow them on their socials and go download Storyiverse now and check out this groundbreaking new story format app and let them know Storyboy sent you. Back to the show. So something a little bit freaky happened last night, and I don't really know what to make of it. I'm not really sure if it has anything to do with that video that I dropped a few months ago about that party, but something about it really doesn't sit right with me. But before I get into what exactly happened, I need to kind of explain how I got into this situation. So see, last month I did a video about dark web stories that a bunch of the viewers were requesting. I found a bunch of scary stories and I compiled them into a scary dark web style video. And the first story in that video is about dark web mystery box services. This is a service that I've been very aware of for a very long time now. To be honest, I've probably watched every single mystery box opening video that's available on YouTube. And for some reason, that subject just really intrigued me. Ordering a random box off of the dark web that could literally contain anything, and it's being created by an anonymous seller, it's just such a freaky, cool experience. The craziest thing about the service is that they usually don't get shipped through FedEx. They just show up one day on your front stoop with no return label or anything. They just pop up. I don't know, it just has this allure about it that has always just made me want to order one. But to be honest, I was always too scared to because I was never sure about how to properly protect my identity on the dark web. So I never even tried. So after I dropped that video, a lot of supporters told me that I should do a mystery box unboxing video. And I really did think it over, but I came to the conclusion that I didn't really feel comfortable ordering it myself. But my friend John knows his way around the dark web, and that man could absolutely make it happen. And he even told me that he would get it shipped to his house and then he would just drop it off at mine. So I wouldn't even have to put any of my personal information in. And this sounded good to me, especially because I'm trying to deliver you the content that you guys are asking for. So I pull the trigger on it and John puts the order in. Mind you, we put this order in over a month ago. And these people don't give you any confirmation email, any receipt, or any estimated time of arrival. 
They just take your information and your money and you just have to sit there and hope that it wasn't a scam. And I knew that going in. I knew that this was a sketchy thing to do. I knew that when we purchased it, I might have just lost $500 right there and we were never getting a box. But even if I lose the money, it will be worth it because at least the supporters know that I'm invested in giving them the content that they want. But after about three weeks, I pretty much just gave up on it. And I just kind of came to terms with the fact that I probably got scammed and I just kind of moved on. Until yesterday morning, my buddy John hit me up and he told me that the box had arrived overnight. He just sent me a picture of the box on his doorstep with a text message that said, look what I woke up to. And from the original picture, I could tell that the box was pretty cool. It definitely looked like the sender put a good amount of effort into it, so I was pretty excited. Because with the mystery box stuff, you always just worry that they're gonna send you just some gross stuff in a gross beat up box just gross stuff. Sometimes they just put gross liquids, animal hair, rotten meat, and all that kind of stuff in the box and they just send it and they're like, here's your mystery. And they'll just scribble Sharpie on the outside, just such low effort. So when I saw the picture, I was pretty happy with the initial appearance. Remember when I told you guys I was gonna get a mystery box? I said it on a live a couple weeks ago, but I just got a text from my friend John who ordered it for us because I didn't know how to order it. And he sent me a picture of it on our stupid home. We were running errands, but I got that text and I just need to show it to you guys. We haven't seen it yet and we're, oh, wrong turn. Um, we're pulling up to our house right now and we're gonna go grab it and unbox it for you guys right now. It looks pretty cool, it looks pretty col colorful. We're going in through the garage, so we're, we don't have a good look at it yet. We're gonna go in through the garage and uh, bring you guys through the house and then um, we're gonna pick it up from the stoop, bring it inside. Hey buddy, there's somebody here. Get your squish, buddy. Show me your squish. What's up, buddy? Got your squish? Okay, moment of truth. Messing with me? All right, come on, let's get it. Come on, buddy. Here's the moment of truth. We haven't seen it yet. I'm excited, but I'm a little bit scared, but it's fine. It's okay. It's okay, buddy, stay. Ooh, it's freaky. I don't know, it's not what I was expecting. What do you think, Apollo? Is there poison? Is there poison in it? It's all good? I don't know, what, it's not exactly what I was expecting. No. You know? It looks a little childish, doesn't it? Yeah. A little bit, right? So let's see what it... Come what's on. going on Come here? Going. I don't think I should be touching this. Yeah. Bare hand, should I? All right. Got, a, got the meat marinating gloves. It doesn't look like your traditional mystery box. If you guys have seen them, it's um, usually they come and they're sometimes they're just like kind of gross or janky. They like look scary. This one looks childish. Yeah, this is weird. I'm still gonna throw these on for the just cause. I'm ready to ready to get in there. So let's just start from the outside. I don't want to miss any fun details. What does this say? Happy. Are hope yeah. you hope hope you are happy? I'm assuming. Okay, yeah. and then we got all these numbers on the top. I don't. I'm assuming this is one of those codes. That's kind of fun. It's kind of fun, right? Yeah. I'm assuming it's one of the codes. Let's probably need a pen and paper for this, right? Mm -hmm. I'm assuming it's like this across, and probably you would imagine it's just like the alphabet, right? It's like. So let's look up a, a chart. See, the box looked well-made and it had colorful letters and numbers all around the outside. And it looked like it had been wrapped in matte black tape. And as far as I could tell, it looked like it was gonna be a really cool box with a lot of fun details. And I was super excited to make the video for you guys. See, John and my schedule conflicted that day, so he had to drop the box off at my house while I wasn't home. So we didn't really get to talk about it. So I just came home to it with it on the front porch and we just grabbed the camera and started recording right away. Because to be honest, I was so excited for it. And when I initially picked it up, it wasn't so heavy. It didn't feel like there were many items in there. So my first thought was they basically sent us like an empty box, but the outside looked great and really detailed. So I was just trying to stay optimistic. And now that I was close to it and it wasn't just looking through a picture, I was actually able to get a full 360 view of the outside of it. And there were a lot of intricate details on this thing. For starters, it was covered in big colorful letters all the way around it. And the top was covered in really colorful numbers 
but they were meticulously organized and it seemed like they were all parallel to one another. And when I got to fully spin the box and see what all of the letters read around the base of it, it just said, hope you are happy. And initially I thought, well, that's pretty sweet of the sender. A nice kind message to start this unboxing. Not the type of start I was expecting, but maybe it's something to throw us off. And then it's gonna get creepier once we open it. And the next thing I do is turn my attention to the numbers that are on top of the box. And I wanna note that the lettering that was all over this thing looked like your basic Michael's decorative lettering, which sounds kind of silly, but in a way it did make it a little bit creepier because I just imagine that there's somebody that does dark web mystery boxes and he shops at the same craft stores that we do. That almost makes it more uncomfortable than if the letters were like serious, scary looking lettering. It makes it freakier because this type of person could just be around any of us at any time. And there was something about this box that almost made it look like a little kid's arts and crafts project. But either way, I just start analyzing the numbers on the top of it, and I'm just trying to see if I see any pattern in it. But I can't really tell what they're about initially. There were 22 numbers total, I'm pretty sure, so that ruled out if it was a phone number or an address. It's too long. And I'm pretty sure bank accounts have 12 numbers and credit cards have 17, so it couldn't be either of those e either. So then my head changes direction into it must be some type of code or riddle. So I just start to try to decode it with the most basic tactic. I just try to line up the numbers with what letters they represent. So I start to go from right to left each row at a time, but the letters that they're representing don't really make any sense. It's literally random letters. So I start to think it's a word jumble and then I get kind of annoyed because I'm not trying to solve a word, word jumble right now. I'm trying to get spooked by a mystery box. To be honest, I didn't want to spend the next two hours trying to decode this number riddle. I wanted to go work on the next story for you guys and just finish up this unboxing, but I thought I might as well give it a couple more tries, just in case it said something super creepy that I knew you guys would enjoy. So I try to just go number by number, just from left to right. I'm not trying to do two different rows, I'm just going from left to right, because the numbers kind of align like this. There is a clear direction from left to right. You'll see it. And the first letter must have been I because the first number was nine, which is the ninth letter in the alphabet. And the next number was two, which could be B, but the third number was three. So that would come out to C. So you would get I, B, C. And no word starts with B, C. So then I go, okay, what's the 23rd number in the alphabet? The 23rd number in the alphabet is W. So I tried to move forward with that. So I, W. And the fourth number is nine, so it must be I again. But the next four numbers were one, two, one, two, which could be A, B, A, B, or it could be L, L, because L is the 12th number in the alphabet. And I came to the conclusion that it must be L, L, because if you go by that logic, now we have I will. And see, that starts to make sense to me. There's a lot of black tape on this. There is, it is. Right, it looks kind of sturdy. Yeah. I appreciate the effort in it. Mm -hmm. To be honest, I appreciate the effort. I think it's, I'm happy it didn't just come like janky and messed up, you know? Yeah. This is, I feel like this is better. We get to like decode it. It should be kind of fun. So, How did John get this? Um, he, or, it, I mean, yeah, no, he said it, um, he actually said it came to his house overnight. So they gave him the address, but there's no, there's obviously no packaging slip on it. No. Um, but he said that they do that sometimes. You know, they say that with the gnome service too that you just kind of give the address and somebody comes overnight. Some people have caught it on on their security camera footage. Mm -hmm. uh, but with this stuff, they probably don't want to. So it was just dropped at his house? Apparently it was just dropped at his house and then he dropped it at our house earlier today. I know it's a little sketchy, but yeah. for the YouTube, mm -hmm. for the, they wanted us to do it. They said they said they wanted us to do it. So let's just start nine. Nine is I. Nine is I. Three is two. I mean, uh, three, th three is C. Mm -hmm. One is A. Do you want to tell people how you're getting these numbers? Yeah, like right here. Letters and stuff? Well, the numbers match with the letters. I'm just, this is the first oh. thing that came to my head. Okay. Yeah, it's the first thing. I don't, this could be, I could be just completely making this up. Mm -hmm. This could be, well, how many numbers is it? It could be a phone number, can it? Probably not. I don't follow those numbers, no. There's 22. Okay. So it's definitely not a phone number. No. I don't think it could be a credit card. No, no. credit card is like 17, right? Something like that. And a bank this account. a lot of numbers. Yeah, I don't think it could be a credit card or a bank account, right? Okay. Okay, so 
I'm just gonna keep trying this. So okay. three, one, one, one. It's four one, so it'd be A, A, A. Um, I see A, 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 and then B, I, B, B. That's looking like nothing to me so far. So I don't think that is it. Maybe instead of like this, instead of like going row by like row, that. maybe it goes nine, two, three, nine. Hmm. Let's try that, I guess. So nine is still I. And then two is B. Mm -hmm. And then three is C. I, B, C. That's not making too much sense already. I hope it's not one of those jumbles. Oh, like a word puzzle? Yeah, uh -huh. I'm, I'm gonna keep, cause this one definitely isn't well, even a word puzzle. maybe we should get all of the letters and then maybe it is a word jumble puzzle thing. Well, let's do a few more. Okay. Because they could also be like, say it was like 13 or say it was 23. That could technically be W. Like nine is definitely I because nine, there's no, if you do 92, there's not 92 letters in the alphabet. So nine is def like the high numbers are definitely the, mm -hmm. just that number. So nine is definitely I, let's, what is it? 23. So let's try this nine. And then let's say 23 is W. So nine, two, three, nine is I, and then 23 is W. And the next one is nine again. So that's I. Do you think uh, like this would be in order? I'm just trying. We have to find out what all of these numbers and letters would be and then like do a word puzzle. Do you think this is a word puzzle? Well, by this, there's, I feel like there's not like, look, this is, if it was all a word puzzle, just based on these first like 10, there's three B's and four A's and two I's and a C, you know, like, what could mm -hmm. that be? Ciabatta bread? Like, I don't like, you know, yeah. um, unless this is ciabatta bread, I, I don't see it being that it could definitely be a word jumble but let's try this i like i w i so far but then this fourth one is nine again so that would be i again and then we have technically it would be one two one two or it could be 12 12 mm -hmm. what is that you think it goes like in this V form instead? I would, something? I mean, it kind of makes sense if it goes like, kind of like just from left to right, if it goes like, cause this is a little bit after nine and the three is a little bit after two and this nine is a little bit after this three. Mm -hmm. Cause it, I don't think it's just straight across cause just four A's right here. Yeah. We could try Roman numerals after. Okay. But I, I mean, well, this already doesn't make sense for Roman numerals either. So, yeah. but this right now, so what would one, two, one, two be? It would be A, B, A, B, or it could be L, L. Oh, that works. Close. That okay. works because that comes up to I will. Okay. That makes sense, right? Yeah. I, I will makes much more sense than I, W, I, A, B, A, B, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So maybe it is 12, 12. And I, I could be so wrong. We might just take a completely different direction in a second. Guys, there's been a ton of new people on the channel, a ton of new people subscribing. If you're loving the stories, please don't forget to hit subscribe and hit the notification bell. It seems as if 90% of the people that are viewing the videos are not subscribed. Let's change that. And of course, hit like and comment. Let me know what you want to see me do next and make sure you like this video because it helps the channel. Enjoy the show. And the next six numbers were 141520, which could come out to a bunch of different options, but I'm going to save you the boredom. I think you get what this process is like, so I'm going to speed it up for you. That bunch of numbers came out to the word not. So we had, I will not so far. And then once we got that far, it got pretty easy. And the last word was stop. So the numerical riddle at the top of the box came out to I will not stop. And see, now we're getting what we were expecting from the mystery box. Freaky encoded messages that make your skin crawl. So, so far we have hope you're happy and I will not stop on the outside of the box. And now I was getting a little bit excited about it because this is what I ordered. And I felt like whoever made this box was doing a really good job so far. But that would make this next one either being A, 
It could be A, D, or it could be N. Mm -hmm. I will we A, D. We don't know if it's really going to be in order because around the box we have happy R, U over here, and hope. Yeah, it doesn't... We're not really putting things in order, but we can keep trying it like this, I, I'm just saying. Should we try a different direction? Um... I'm happy with I will so far. Yeah, I mean, that's progress, so. And then 14 would be a... I mean, 1, 4 would be A, B. So that's an option. So it's A, B... Or what's the 14th? Or N. Okay. Or 14 N. So it could be either A, B, but A, B is like, that could be something I will... Would absolutely absolutely <laughs> put dead animals in this box yeah. you know um and then we have either one five or 15 so that could be either a one five a e or o okay, okay so it could be either be a e or o and then 14 could either be n or a b so it wouldn't be a b a e Unless it was a word jumble. Mm -hmm. But we always already have I will. Right. So it could either be A, E, or O. I think because we already have I will, this is a sentence. I don't think it's a jumble. Okay. Well, if that's the case, then I feel like N, O makes more sense. Mm hmm 15. And then the next one could either be 2 or 20. 2, 0, or 20. So 2 would be B. Yeah, well, it's definitely not 2, 0, because there's no 0 in the alphabet. Oh. So this is definitely 20. Okay, it's 20, yeah. T. Okay, so I will not. Oh, I will not. Okay. Well, we're getting somewhere. So this is definitely what it is. Yeah. Because that's already, that's three words in a row. That's not a coincidence. Yeah. So we got that already. Uh-huh. 1, 9, or 19. Two zero. Well, that's a T again. So we know that there's a T in there. And then fifteen, sixteen, or, or well, this nineteen could be the second. The second letter is T. So this one, nineteen is S, and I kind of like S T. Okay. That makes sense. So S T, and then fifteen. Let's just see. Oh, oh, oh. We got it. Yeah, it's I will not stop. Apollo. Follow, come here. It's nobody. Buddy, it's nobody. It's okay. Buddy, nobody's there. Come on. Why are you barking at nothing? So, okay. yeah, definitely I will not stop. So that's a little bit freaky, isn't it? It will not stop. Yeah, it's doing what we kind of wanted it to do. So we got hope you're happy and I will not stop. So that's cool. At least he's doing it. At least, like, you know, the sender's doing the bit. You know, he's making it freaky, so that's fun. I will not stop it. Hope you are happy. I mean, I'm happy you put effort into it, you know? Yeah. So, you ready to open it? Yeah. Okay. So, we slowly start cutting this box open and start to inspect the inside. And I didn't want to go fast because I didn't want to miss any cool, creepy details. So, we just started to peel it open really slowly and start inspecting both flaps on the inside. They had a to and from section on those flaps on the inside of the box, which was pretty interesting because it didn't have a packaging slip on the outside. And you see, this is where I started to get a bad feeling about the box. I was trying to keep it playful for the video, but when I saw this, it really made my stomach sink a little bit. The to section read, to everyone that you've ever loved. And the from section read, from the man that's going to take it all away. But see, what, what it said isn't what really bothered me. It was the fact that each line was written in different colors. Almost as if the lines were organized by color. But it only gave me a little twinge of concern because everything else about the box was colorful. All the way up until this point, that seemed to be an overall theme of this box. So it was on brand but I'm not gonna pretend like I didn't notice it. And the threats that were written in it are really whatever, because we didn't even get this box sent to our place. So all these threats are actually directed towards John. And I'm actually going to show all of this to John once we're finished, immediately. But John wasn't scared anyway, because he just said that these boxes are just for thrill seekers. And he doesn't really care what's in it anyway. And I couldn't tell if I was just a little bit nervous for the video and the unboxing, or if I really did have a bad feeling about these clues. But I just wanted to keep it moving because I just wanted to get past those little petty written threats. And I actually just wanted to open the 
box and see what's on the inside and have you guys see what's on the inside all the way. Whatever was in the box, once we opened it all the way, was covered by just happy birthday tissue paper. So we couldn't see anything that was really in there yet, but it was worth inspecting because everything had been very intentional up until this point. And there were actually more numbers on the inside of the flaps that we couldn't see until it was completely open. And the numbers read 912 811. So I immediately just start decoding it the same way that I decoded the numbers on the outside of the box. But it isn't making sense in any way that I'm doing it. It's coming out to IAB and HAA, which made no sense to me until I looked back at the tissue paper on the inside of the box. It was happy birthday tissue paper. And my birthday is September 12th. And my girl's birthday is August 11th. And this is where I start to genuinely get scared. But we're just trying our absolute best to keep it together. I didn't like the threats on the outside at all, but these boxes are meant to freak you out. But it got different when I saw our birthdays on. And the first thing that came to my head is, is John pranking me. But there's no reason that John would prank me. For starters, he isn't even here, and he doesn't really seem like the pranking type in general. The only conclusion that I could come to was maybe he made it himself, because he had felt bad that we had spent so much money on it. And his order didn't work, like he said he would take care of it and get it for us, and it didn't come, so he took it upon himself to make a box and drop it off. And he would just want us to get it and open it, and be genuinely scared and surprised, and then after he would say that he made it. These were just the things that my brain was jumping to, the conclusions that I was jumping to, to try to rack rationalize the coincidences that I'm seeing here. I wanted to stop right there and call him, but for some reason I just kept going. I want to cut it. It's already kind of peeling open. That wasn't a great job, but I want to cut it so it's nice. There we go. I'm going to go slow. I'm going to go super slow because I don't want to miss any details for you guys. So I had and open this. Let's just cut this really quick. Okay, so right away, happy birthday. right away we're seeing happy birthday right here. Weird. Odd. <laughs> Don't love it, but we have, okay. So it didn't come with packaging slips, but it does come with a from and a to. Two says, to everyone you have ever loved. Who has ever loved you? Oh, I can't read. <laughs> I can't read. Um, to everyone who has ever loved you. Yes. I told you I'm a little dislike <laughs> from the man that's gonna take it all away going a little too hard with the bit dude yeah. I don't like that I don't like that no. I don't like that it's I don't know why everything has to be so colorful yeah I mean it's on brand I guess yeah but... I definitely don't like that though the color coded of it why is wrong with it being color coded I, I, I don't know. I just don't... You remember that thing I told you about? I just don't like... I don't like it. But it's okay. I mean, at least he's... I'm happy he's doing it. I'm happy he's doing the bit. We, mm -hmm. I don't know. Well, there's colors all over the box. It's just the theme of it, I guess. Yeah, that makes me feel a bit better. About and then we have happy birthday paper. We have happy birthday paper. All right, we ready to keep moving? Yeah. To, every, to everyone who's ever loved you, huh? Thanks, man. Mm -hmm. to, to anybody who's ever loved John. Who was supposed to come to us? Yeah. He come to us. <laughs> Sorry, John. Okay. Okay, we have more numbers. So, more numbers on the inside, and we have, maybe it's the end of this sentence. Maybe it's the end of I will not stop. I'm not super excited on what's to pull this away. Yeah. Because there's something like a little, I don't know what that is. Yeah. And it's kind of. something fleshy in there or something. It feels a little smushy, but also has the shape of a head. Oh no. Don't love that. Oh gosh. Um, but, I don't know. It could be a balloon or something. Or no, don't do that. Yeah. Don't do that with your bare hands. What are you yeah. doing? No. I was just curious. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so maybe this is the extension to this. So we got a nine, so another I. Nine, and then a one or a two or a 12. A 12 is an L, so it'd be I L. So maybe we have I it'd be Illinois, don't like that. No. Or an eight. And then we have an eight, which is a H and an A A maybe. H A A. That doesn't really make sense. Oh. J A. What? Oh, I don't like that. What? 
That's your birthday. That's my birthday. That's weird. Don't like that. No. I don't like, I know, like, that's not. You think John put some information in about us or something? I don't, he wasn't supposed to. I don't, I don't like, should I call him? Yeah, probably. Like now, or should we just get this over with? Uh, do you want to keep going at all, or? Well, I mean, I don't love. The happy birthday and then our birthdays. First off, this didn't, this rubbed me the wrong way yeah. already. This I don't like at all. You think it was him? You think he was doing it? Cause you, John? yeah, you remember that didn't come in like on time. We kind of thought it wasn't gonna come in. Do you think he just did it like for so we would have something to record? I don't know. You can ask him. Either he did that or he put in information that he wasn't supposed to because. Yeah, but I saw him do it. I was there. Like he he put it, he just put it like in his address and it was just like a crypto exchange that just sent the dude money, and then it was just supposed to show up. Should we just get this over with? I don't know, that's really creepy. It's probably him, right? It's probably a bit. I don't know. I don't know, it's probably a bit. If, I feel like if we pull the tissue paper up, we everything will not be as freaky. I think it's still gonna be freaky, but... Okay. So I just pick up the happy birthday tissue paper and I put it off to the side, and there's just a couple random items in the box. And they just seem like random, harmless, everyday items. There was nothing about these items that were very special. And they weren't even presented in a cool way. They're just kind of tossed in there. And the first most obvious thing that I notice is the big squish malo. It's big and purple and it's right on the top. It was one of those squishy stuffed animals that you get at CVS or Walmart, but it was actually purple because it was a Pokemon. It was actually a Gengar. And see, that gave me a little twinge of anxiety because of a story that I've told in the past here. It's actually the fifth oldest video on my channel, and it's about strangers. So go watch that to understand the context of what a Gengar means to me. But it's just a stuffed animal, so I put it off to the side and I just move on to the next item. And the next item was a red bag of M&Ms. And it was like a red bag with a special cookie dough variety of M&Ms or something. I've never tried this kind of M&M before, and the bag was completely sealed, so I didn't think about inspecting the inside of it. I did kind of inspect it a little bit to see if it had been opened and then resealed, but it looked like it was the original packaging. So I just put them off to the side as well. And the inside of the box hadn't been nearly as exciting as the outside of the box yet, until I picked up the third item. It's gonna initially sound as boring as the other two items, but when I picked it up, I started to get a very bad feeling. The third item was a bottle of Myers hand soap. And I know what you're thinking, who cares about hand soap? But this is the exact hand soap that we use in our house. It's our favorite hand soap, and it's the only one that we get. And this could be absolutely a coincidence, but we had just talked about how we needed to pick up more soap just the other day. We had just run out of this exact hand soap. And for some reason, the timing of it and the brand lining up really started to get to me. We talked about how weird that was for just a second, but we were both to the point where we just wanted to get this video done. So we just moved on to the next item. It's okay, go ahead, pull it up. Let's just do it, let's just yeah. finish. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so I'm not nearly as nervous now. So we got a, a squish malo. A little stuffed animal. So it's a Gengar. Yeah. You know, I don't love that either, but like, yeah, I don't love that. Our, dad, our dog actually loves these. Yeah, we should just get, we should give this to Apollo after. Yeah. Um, he'll enjoy that. Uh, okay. I guess it's a spooky Pokemon. It's a ghost type. Mm -hmm. So at least he's trying. We got M and M's. The flavor of those. Cookie Crunch. I've actually or Crunchy Cookie. I've never had these. Um. Okay. Do they look like they're resealed? Like, who, why would he send us candy? I don't know, it's very you think weird. think we're gonna eat it? Yeah, like, what? we're not gonna eat it. I'd be annoyed if it was just like super corny and they just put like, like little eyeball candies in there or something. Yeah. Just like super corny Halloween. Mm -hmm. I mean, 0 for 2 so far. Yeah. Right? <laughs> 0, for 2. 0 for 2 so far. We got this. We got... So? That's so weird. This has to be a bit. You think John's behind it? 
Well, he was at the house. Well, maybe he didn't actually get approved for the box. I'm not sure how the process works, but maybe he felt bad. No, it's just weird. I mean, like, he was at the house, so he couldn't know. Right. This is... Yeah, but how would he, like... We were just saying we need to pick this up. This is weird. These, like... This bugged me a lot. And these are, like, whatever. Mm -hmm. But... I don't like this. These are... This is literally the hand soap that we use. Like, in our house. Too close for comfort, right? Let's just keep going. I mean, it's just is soap. Is it a coincidence? <laughs> Maybe it just smells like shit. <laughs> You know, like the uh, fart bags. And the next item was just a long silver flashlight. And I feel like flashlights are a very common item in the mystery box unboxings that I've watched. So this item didn't really bother me. It was one of those items that are kind of a given. There's something creepy about receiving a flashlight in general because it can infer so many things. It can infer that you're gonna need it soon or somebody else had used this to do something bad and creepy. It's just an easy, creepy item. And it didn't bother me one bit until I playfully tried to turn it on and the switch didn't work. Nothing happened and it immediately flashed me back to being in my old apartment with Joe just feeling so defeated when the flashlight on my counter didn't work. It bothered me this time though. This time it felt like a slap in the face. It almost felt like an I told you so. So I shook the flashlight and I could tell that there's batteries in the flashlight for sure. So I unscrewed the back and I slowly let them fall out. And the batteries are flipped backwards, just like at the old apartment. And now I was just getting a bad feeling about this box in general. And this made me panic. So now every bad scenario just starts flooding my mind. Did I make a mistake ordering this thing? Did these people really find me? Or is this whole thing just a weird little coincidence? Like this mystery box is completely unrelated to that. And how would this mystery box seller know to do this? There were no other items in the box. The bottom of the box was just covered in that same happy birthday tissue paper that was covering the top. And now that I had seen all of the items, I was just trying to look at the box as a whole, just trying to see any connection between each item. And I'm just trying to see if there could be any connection between the person who sent this and the people in LA. But it just doesn't make sense. Like we didn't even put any of our information in when this box was ordered. It was all John's. There's no way they would even know that this box was coming to us. So how would they know? If it wasn't the people from LA, then the sender maybe could have seen one of my videos. But how would they know that I ordered it? John ordered it and he used all of his info. I watched him do it. And the connections that I'm making in my head logically felt stupid because of what I knew about how John ordered. Like this box was made for John and we were just opening it for YouTube. So my silly little head making these paranoid connections makes no sense. We got a flashlight. But okay. doesn't work. It doesn't even work. I, this is such a um. This is just such a obvious thing mm -hmm. to put in this. You know, yeah. I kind of appreciate how this guy did it. I don't know how much everybody's gonna love it because, uh, you know, you kind of you're kind of expecting it to be freakier. Yeah. I like the the riddle's cool. Part I part of me thinks Johnny John did this. Yeah. Um. Flash, I don't even work, but. Switch. It has like what, like a happy birthday theme or something with our birthdays, which is weird. That is weird. Um, that's what makes me think John did it. Yeah. Cause it's like, I mean, there's definitely stuff. In, there's definitely. Batteries in there. Yeah. Hmm. Is it focusing? It just did, yeah. Well, they're in. They're they're flipped. It has to be John. Cause this is like too related to our stuff. Yeah. Like we just, we just posted that video. We just like the Gengar thing too with the, mm -hmm. the stranger video. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. It's oh, um, yeah, the Pokemon thing, right? It has to be him because the, I mean like the batteries are flipped in this thing. Maybe you should call him. Do you want to call him? Do you want to like end this now and call him or what? Um, I mean, we did tell everybody that we were going to do this. Yeah. Like, so I just want to finish it, finish it for them, you know? And that thought 
kind of calmed me down and it, I kind of came to the conclusion that this must all be a coincidence. And I truthfully wasn't as worried anymore until I flipped the batteries in the flashlight and I just turned the flashlight on playfully pointing down towards the box. And I was just randomly pointing the flashlight towards the bottom of the box. So when I turned it on, I looked and it kind of went through the tissue paper and I noticed something under it. There was something else at the bottom of this box under this tissue paper, but all I could see was a little emblem through the tissue paper that looked like a little tree and all of the adrenaline just started flooding back in. I recognized that symbol and I didn't want to pick up that tissue paper, but I knew I had to. So I slowly picked up the tissue paper and pulled it away and I wasn't sure what I was looking at at first. It was just like a collage of pictures. And the pictures were super dark and a little bit blurry. And I couldn't see what they were at first because they were all just flipped in different directions. But when I tilted my head to look at the nearest one, I realized who was in the picture. It was my girlfriend cooking in our kitchen. And the picture was taken through our back windows. And my adrenaline immediately turned to anger. Every protective fiber of my being was on fire. And I've never felt that before. I've never seen something that triggered me like that. So I started inspecting the other photos in there. And they're all pictures of us. They're all just pictures of us taken from outside of our house, doing random stuff through our windows. Uh, I'm sure he's just gonna be laughing. Like, when we call him, like, oh, gotcha. You know, like, um, hmm. What? There's something else under here. Okay. Okay. I don't love the flip batteries thing, but let's see. This is making me nervous. I'm like sweating. Yeah, I don't like this at all. <laughs> this is not fun. This isn't what I thought. I thought this was going to be fun and like spooky. This it is, is spooky, but it's not the fun kind. Are those pictures? What is that? That's weird. This isn't fun. This, I, we should probably call him, right? Yeah. There's a note in there too. That's really creepy. No, I don't like this at all. Is that us walking the dog? Oh. Babe, this is you making dinner. This is literally this week. This is me washing dishes. That's you in the room. They literally took this from our porch. They took this from our porch. Like literally through that window. It has to be John then. It has to I be. I have to believe it's John so I don't start freaking out. So you're gonna have to call him. Off record, like, I might actually have to talk to him about this. This isn't, like, I'm, I'm all here for a prank, but this isn't, this isn't funny. Mm -hmm. This is like, this is almost like he put too much effort into this. This is freaky. This is literally us walking. Yeah. That was literally last week. Like this person was following us on our walk and my mind is just racing in a million different directions. And I start to look at all of the other items differently. And now that I know that this person has honed in on us, I know that there has to be something else to these items. Like the hand soap seems like a given. They just heard us say it. They heard us say it and they just gifted it to us so we know that they were listening. Just like with the half and half. And the flashlight, they just did the exact same thing. They just flipped the batteries to let me know that they were back. But what about these other two items? A Pokemon Squishmallow? Like, could this be the dude from the park district from all those years ago? Is that guy even out of jail? Is he even still alive? But then it hit me. Our dog loves these things. He doesn't like toys or balls. He just likes to hold Squishmallows in his mouth. He just holds them in his mouth when he has big feelings and he just slowly chews on them. Was this thing in here as a gift to my dog? Like, why would they even do that? Just to let us know that they know what our dog likes? Our dog might like Squishmallows, but he definitely doesn't like strangers. And no Squishmallow is saving you from an angry 100 pound Doberman. So I'm just moving this Squishmallow around in my hand, just inspecting. But then I feel something inside of it. I barely felt it but it felt like something hard while I was rotating. So I start inspecting to find if there's any openings in it. And right on the stuffed animal's spine, there's like a little cut. You wouldn't notice it if you were just messing with it. You really had to look close to see the incision. So I carefully reach my fingers inside of it and I feel what's on the inside. And it just feels like a hard piece of wood or something. So I just slowly pull it out and then I realize almost immediately that it's a big dog treat shoved inside of my dog's favorite kind of toy. But when I flip this treat around, it has five pills stuck to the treat. 
as if these things are glued on them. There's just five circular white pills attached to this big tree, and now it starts to make sense. So this, we just talked about. That's very similar to something um, I literally just talked about. But then what's up with these? Now I'm looking at this all, I'm happy I have gloves on now. Mm -hmm. Um. Mm. What? There's something in there. Like what? I don't know, it's hard. Is it like a knife or something? Mm-mm. You can't even see it. Uh, mm, should I pull it out? It looks like a piece of wood or something. Uh, yeah, I mean, you have gloves on, so... Tree? This is literally a dog treat. With like pills on the back? What is like they're like stuck to the back. Oh now I don't like I thought that it's literally like Apollo's favorite toy is these. Yeah. So and this was like hidden in there with these. So that he would like get it out and yeah if we like if we like gave this to him he would just he would have found like a, we i almost didn't notice these i almost just like yeah, tossed this onto the floor because i was like what is this this is just stupid yeah yeah i don't like that they wanted me to give that squishmallow to our dog without noticing the treat inside but the dog would know there was a treat in there, and he would have gotten to that treat eventually, and would have eaten these pills while he was eating the treat. And they put this many pills on there to make sure that either the dog didn't make it, or he was at least incoherent for the night. Whoever sent this realized that the dog was an issue, and he tried to drug him. So then I turned my attention to the bag of M&Ms. Because if a stuffed animal has an ulterior motive, then a bag of candy can too. So I'm inspecting this bag and I realize something. The M&M guy that's on the front of the package has a weird hairstyle. It looks like somebody put a swipe of peanut butter on his head. And it looks a little bit out of place. It doesn't look like it matches the flavor that's on the package. So I take a better look at the flavor label and it looks like it's glued on. It looks like it's on there covering something else. And if you didn't look really close, you definitely wouldn't have noticed it. And I managed to peel this thing off and it says peanut butter underneath. Whoever this was tried to poison my dog and my girlfriend. My girlfriend's allergic to peanuts. Do you see that? This is weird. Because look at that, babe. And this. His hair? Yeah. Look at this. Oh my gosh. That is so. And I swear, if that if we didn't see that note, I wouldn't have thought twice about this. I wouldn't have thought twice about this thing. Okay. Imagine you ate this. How would they know? How would they know? Who would know that you're allergic to this? They, John? did they purposely fucking, did they purposely put this in a red bag? Cause like we always know like don't like eat out the yellow ones. Right. Just like avoiding your allergy. Who puts this much detail? Look at this one on the bottom too. It literally has it on the bottom too. Does this one come off? That one comes off too. So this man went and got a not so common M&M flavor. That bag wasn't yellow like the common yellow peanut M&M bags and tried to hide that they contained peanuts. Everybody knows that the peanut M&M bags are bright yellow, but I had no idea that the peanut butter M&Ms were in a red bag. He even covered the small logos on the bottom of the bag with another cookie logo to try to trick us into eating. But the one thing that doesn't make sense is that I don't know why he would think that we would eat anything that came off the dark web in a random mystery box but maybe they were just trying to let us know that they knew about her allergy. This wasn't just a fun mystery box anymore. This box was filled with threats. This box wasn't even supposed to be about us. The sender shouldn't have even known that it was coming to us. Like, how is this box so personalized? I was so consumed with the items and the photos that I completely forgot about the first thing that drew my attention when I turned the flashlight on. The first thing I noticed was that little tree symbol. So I open it up and it reads, Hmm. What's on the outside of the card? 
Oh, I don't like that at all. It's a tree? Yeah. It has to be him. This has to be a bit. Dear Mr. Anonymous, I see that you can't follow rules. Do you even know the rules? Do you know the penalty for not following them? You will. Rule number one, one orders box for oneself. Rule number two, one does not hide identity upon purchase. Two simple rules not worth breaking. This could have been fun for the both of us. Now it'll only be fun for me. I will show you that you are not above the rules. Your friend speaks too highly of himself. He's helpless like an infant, as are you. You really thought I wouldn't know the box was for you? You thought we couldn't find you? Your ignorance is insulting, Dougie. I mean, Mr. Anonymous. P.S. Sleep well. 